consult, Pax Prince Manufacturing Company, and a co CEO of Pastoria Bakery. Mr. Gordon is passionate about assisting organizations in achieving business efficiency and competitiveness. He's also passionate about the youth, about youth development and empowerment and has assisted many uh, individuals in becoming different and change makers. He, he guided and assisted many organizations in achieving business goals. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Gorin and you have to with a round of applause. Super good to be here. Uh, they put me um, at the last. Uh, no problem, this is good. You know, I know many of you are tired, so um, I'll make it quick and um, we'll all learn something new today. Yeah? So, we're talking about how to basically standardize project management practices and incorporating them into um, organizations, modern businesses. Already, we have modern businesses. You know, so that's what we are here to talk about. Simply uh, knowing how to push in project management. We know the value of project management, but the thing is, we know how to introduce it to organizations. You know, uh, many organizations are looking for ways to improve, ways to do things better. I'll be listening um, to my other speakers. You know, pointing to the fact that we have to improve. You know, so we need to know the process. So today I'll show you the process, how to basically do that. Yes, we can learn the lessons because I'm a lecturer. Normally I like to go with this one to basically prepare your mind. I'll be talking about the importance of um, project management real quick. I wouldn't deliver the point because we know many of them already. And um, I'll jump straight into the process of standardizing peer practices and incorporating them into the modern businesses. And as we do this, we tend to understand the project maturity model below. So great look at my friend. I've got two, three friends I work with. This is one Mr. Kojo Fighter. He's thinking, you know, like my friend talked about, you know, digitization and all that, you know, put a lot of pressure on many organizations. So Mr. Fighter is thinking, how do I basically break through? Because you know uh, we live in a world of four C's. Four C's, first is change. And digitization or digitalization will bring the change. The other one is complexity, you know, and the third one is competition. The last one is obviously COVID. Four of four seats, you know, so it's not going away. It's just getting started. It's just getting started, you know. So many organizations like the Stafford Fighter are struggling. How do we improve? How do we make a change? We are thinking. You know, and I always say this one, two P's always find every organization. Two P's. So one question was, you know, they yeah, are good already, so why do they want to improve? Two P's will always find you problems and projects. So organizations will keep having problems, organizations will keep having projects. To come up with problems, you need projects. You know, and the world of forces will introduce your the projects because you have to grow. You know, so Mr. Sapo, you fight a thing, think through them. You know the problems already, I will go through them. And um, four C's already talked about it. Now, when you find yourself in the world of four C's, you have to improve. You have to start thinking of how to do things differently. If not, you die. So you fight or you die. You swim or you sink. You prevail or you perish. You know, so you need to find ways of doing things. And I'm telling you, many organizations are looking for ways. I work with many organizations, they look for ways. How do we improve? How do we do things better? Everybody wants to improve. But the question is, we don't know how to improve. So if you walk into organizations, I do train for many organizations as well. If you walk in there, you just realize they are fighting, they are looking for ways to improve. And the thing is, they do not know exactly what to do to improve. Exactly what to do to improve. So I went with this guy, to his called Mr. Q. He likes to ask a lot of questions, you know. So he say, are they really winning the fight? Are they? Some are, some are not. So what we do, we need to show them how to do it. Many are coming out with strategies, you know, thinking of processes, but is it the right process? 
So we need to standardize the practice. Simply put, show them how to do it well. Show them how to do it well. So it's time to standardize the practice. It's time to show them their light. You know, so I haven't got many young guys here. When I teach my students, I normally tell them, I give them these steps and that we can give them a lot of jobs. Because we give uh, many of our students knowledge about project management. We pick their different uh, curricula. They all have project management in there. But once they step in like ECG, they don't know how to introduce PM in there. So that's, that's the input of this presentation. How? So now we know the power is project management because they will have projects. Looking for ways, you need projects. If you want to basically implement change, you need projects. If you want to implement your strategies, you need projects. And projects are managed with what? Project management. The best you, you know. So that's the light for you, project management. Now let's stay with project management a wee bit and show you my other friend called Mr. Muscle. He's powerful. Very powerful, you know, and I want to show you the powers of Mr. Muscle. Now let's listen to some project management virtuosos, wizards, you know, gurus in project management. I'll introduce you one guy called Jeffrey Pinto. He said this. If you basically want to thrive and survive, it will take project management. If you basically want to survive and thrive, it will take project management. Management. So that's from Jeffrey Pinto. You want to basically survive and thrive in competitive market, you need project management. So we know project management is really powerful. I wouldn't believe at that point. The second one is coming from um, PMI 2010. They did a survey um, from um, Economic Intelligence Survey Unit. You know, this one they said they said this 80 percent of 80 uh, percent of executive service. You know. To remain competitive in recession or downturns, you need project management. So what really helped them was project management during the downturn. And McKinsey and Co. I think we have a lot of um, data from them, a lot of information from them. They also said this one, moving or looking to the future, take project management. So they see it as one of, one of the top three priorities. You know, so I, I'm saying I haven't got a lot of um, um, young lads here. Look into the future. If you haven't got project management skills, it will be very, very difficult for you. And we talked about digitization. There's something I have to introduce to you called PMTQ, Project Management Technology Quotient. Quotient means ability. So you need to have the ability to use technology to manage projects. So my friend said it was, was on point. You know, the report from you on point. You know, we have to look beyond the technical skills. But PMR has got it right to the talent triangle, isn't it? You know, so not just looking at technical skills, but looking at business acumen and also leadership. So all these administrative things will go away, but what we stay is leadership and people management skills. So we need to learn how to do that more. That's a little bit um, off a little bit, but that's okay to um, give us some perspective. My friend Tom Peters is telling us to add more value your business, it wouldn't take your normal operations, which we call repetitive task, you take project. You take project. So organizations will have two things, problems and project. The question is, how do they manage their project? So we need to help them standardize it. Show them how. So I'll be showing you how to go through that. So a project, I wrote this one, if a project has to be done, it has to be done right. And you do it right with project management. So ECG, I wanted to ask this question. Uh, this question. Uh, have you got a PMO? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, the project you are working on, do you include, um, do you invite, are, are, you, is, uh, are you having consultants to do them for you? Or your people in there are basically working on it? Our people are working on it. That's super. It's good you have your people in yeah. That's super, you know. So you need to grow your PMO. And as we go through this one, you understand how to grow your PMO. I'm done. Mr. Question says, you are not done. 
he asked a question for me. So the question is, we agree project management is critical to today's business. How do you standardize and integrate it? So we need to learn how. I'll show you how. It's a journey, not a destination. It's what? A journey, not a destination. So as you grow your project management maturity, it's a journey. You need to keep working on it. It's a never-ending journey. It doesn't end, you know. But we'll see the various steps, you know. So how do we do that? Let's see the journey. Use reps. I love working with acronyms. One of the things that will basically make you remember things, acronyms. You know, I, I teach how to remember things as well. You know, so my students, I also teach them how to learn. Don't give them information. Also teach them how to learn. And one of the ways of learning is using acronyms. It will make you remember. It's given an index. You know, so I use acronyms. So I came out with this acronym called REPS. And REPS is steps. So you need to take steps with REPS. That's a rough thing. One of the things I was going to use to rub one day. <laughs> so I'll use REPS. And my guy says, uh, Mr. Q, what is REPS? Obviously, you ask this question. REPS is an acronym. And REPS is an acronym I already said. And it stands for... Readiness. And let me be quick to say this one. You can use this process methodology to introduce anything new to an organization. Should I say this again? You can use the reps methodology to introduce anything new to an organization. So that's the process. I read a lot, did some research and came up with reps. R stands for readiness. E stands for evaluation, where you do baseline study. P stands for planning for change. And as things are going, you need to think of sustainability and how do we now sustain the system? You think about it. So reps can be used to introduce anything new to an organization. So digitization, if you want to introduce that to an organization, you can use reps. If you want to introduce project management, help them know how to standardize it, you can use reps. So now we stick with project management. Readiness, what is readiness? I need to look at three things, incentives. I need to look at capacity. I need to look at roles and responsibilities. So I need to check how ready the organization is. So uh, the roles and responsibilities in there will tell me whether they are ready or not. Do they have functions, you know, project management functions? in there, you tell me how ready they are. You didn't have structures in there, you tell me how ready they are. Incentive, what is driving them? What is motivating them to improve? I need to find out. There's some pressures, you know, find out all these ones. That's readiness. And, you know, the last one, obviously, would be your capacity. Qualification. You didn't have, um, you didn't understand project management, you know, you didn't know how to do it. You know, how qualified are the people, the skills in there, you know. So you need to understand this one before you jump into it. Reps is very powerful. So start with what? Readiness. How ready are they? Once we know how ready they are, we need to basically do evaluation. So baseline study, you know, you do more. This one will build on the reps. So do baseline studies to basically understand the organization. Their goals, who are their major challenges, who are the existing practices. We need to understand all of that. Existing practices, and all that. I've got 10 minutes, so I'll run now. So we check the existing practices and all that. So we try to understand where they are, you know, because I'll be giving you uh, stages. If you don't do the uh, baseline study, you never know where to put them. Okay, so we do that, and uh, we plan for change. That's improvement. We need to move forward. You know, so we need to basically confirm support, secure bar aids, you know, support is very, very important. Stay with them and engage them tell me that, you know, we need to let the people be involved. They need to understand the process. We need to get their bar in, you know. Then we plan for that journey. It's a peace new approach. That means it's a step by step approach. So if I get to ECG to introduce our project management to them, even though they already have the PMO, if I think they still have issues, still go through steps, you know. So I'll, I'll give you four steps, and uh, once we do that, we'll think about sustainability, make it worthy and stay with it. Now let's go for the various steps. Four steps. The first one is baby steps. 
baby steps. That is basically warming them up. So if I walk into ECG, baby steps will take me just a short while. Because these people already understand pre Okay, so it will take just one week. But we take some few days, do some training, you know, baby steps, you know, get your practices, you know, already the ones that are not working and all that. There's something called spider web model. We can use the spider web model to basically help them um, know exactly where they are with their practices and um, help them improve. Once we warm them up, we move to the next one, teen steps. That's a teen stage. For the teen stage, we basically shift the gear start to introduce the other interesting um, bits of project management, you know. So ECG, if you get to the team stage here, yeah, you all say, you are good, what we have to do is we skip it, we just go through some of them quickly and move. Now we go to the other one, adult step, that's how come the baseline study is very, very important. So if I do the baseline study, I know where you are, but I'm still walking through the steps, then I know how long I'll spend with every step. Then we go to the adult step or adult stage. That is time. That is where we say it is time. Now it's time for me to introduce a full scale project management, full fledged project management to the organization. It's time now. So every principle I need to let you know, every process I need to let you know, all the methods, models I need to let you know. But as we do this, PMI will tell you something called tailoring. So as we do this, we also need to teach them to learn. I like the new version, 7th edition, you know, it's giving us 12 principles, you know, and uh, 8 performance domains, you know, shifting the gear a little bit just to make people go around it, you know. So it's super, uh, the 7th edition. So you introduce all aspects to them, you let them know tailoring, how to tailor to suit. Then the last stage, but it's still a journey, you get there and you keep, you need to still improve which I call the father stage. They are now in their kingdom. In the father stage, they understand project management. In the father stage, they know exactly what to do to manage projects. In the father stage, they are thinking of improving. Improving. How do you improve all the time? You know, what are some of the things that we do? In the father stage, they are thinking of becoming something we call gymnastic enterprise. Have you heard of that term before? Gymnastic enterprise. Read a course of the profession 2021. Um, now it says beyond agility. So we're now moving beyond agility. And we call these organization, organizations gymnastic enterprises. They are elite enterprises. They do things differently. They come up with people who are all rounded. So their employees not just having one skill or being specialized in one area, but the other areas you also need to have an idea, you know. So they work on upscaling all the time, you know. The digitization is also in there. They embrace change, they embrace digital solutions, you know. That is the, 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 that mindset. They, are, they have their what I call innovative mindset, you know. So that's the father um, stage, last stage, but like I said, it's a journey. So even when you get to the father stage, you don't still stop growing. It's a learning curve. You still keep improving and improving and improving. My guy again, Mr. Q, not that, but he has one last question for me. He says, what is sustainability? Now, how do we sustain a system? We've grown a system, we need to sustain it, isn't it? And how do we sustain the system? I say this, to sustain a system, think of DRATIC. I told you I work with acronyms. DRATIC. Now, sustainability is utility. Utility means usefulness. If the system is useful, people want to maintain it. Okay? So as we run, we need to also run with something called M&E. Now, notice this M&E is result-based monitoring and evaluation, not implementation-focused monitoring and evaluation. Two things. Two different types of evaluation. Implementation, evaluation, and we also have results evaluation. So this one is results based. Our main focus is on the outcomes. Does it make sense? And monitoring and control is more of implementation, focusing on output. Project management. But with M&E, our main focus is results. 
So here I need to run it with M and E. It should be part of my comprehensive plan. Now as we go, I need to be given the results. Monitoring their results. Okay, with the project project that came in, so I did a baseline study, you were starting here, these were your performances. But when when project when came in, these are the improvements. I'll be reporting on that all the time. Reporting on that all the time for them to appreciate the value of project management and that will make them want to do more. So ME will keep it right from the get-go. Results-based ME will keep it right from the get-go and use implementation focused ME or MNC for the whole project. Okay? So based on what we talked about this one, that if you think about demand. You know, is that demand incentive is also powerful. Roles and responsibilities, we need to have these roles, structures in there, and uh, think about accountability, people should be answerable now. You know, trustworthiness and credibility, the capacity, we build capacity. Here we are thinking about having all rounded people, professionals. We are thinking of having project management professionals. People really understand it. Creating a career what path in there and incentives are our system. Reward and recognition system it should be super, you know, in there. And um, so we have the career path professionals, champions. Let me stay with champions a little bit. For you to ensure strong sustainability, you need to create champions. Champions have got different mindsets. So many organizations are struggling because they haven't got champions. They haven't got what? Champions. You need champions. Champions, they have different minds. They have an entrepreneurial mindset. They have, they, they are different. They look at the non-traditional principles. Now, literature covers the traditional principles. It doesn't really cover the non-traditional principles. You know, things like gratitude, things like, you know, desire, strong desire, something called enthusiasm. Champions, they attach their, their, their hearts to the project. So you find these people, and you, when you find them, you find them and work with them. But normally, we shut champions down. We shut champions down. So we need to create champions. And they will sustain it. Because as they push, it's contagious. So other people also start to learn. Because enthusiasm is contagious. When somebody shows enthusiasm, other people also follow suit. So champions are super. Then um, the infrastructure and all that. So that is the end of my presentation. I'm showing the steps for pushing project management practices into our organization. Very simple step, you know, and it's, it's something you can also use for introducing any change to an organization. Remember this, use reps, and reps run with steps. So know your steps as you go through them. Readiness is powerful, evaluation of where they are, plan for change, and sustain. You think about how to sustain the system. Thank you very much. Wow, that's a powerful Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Golden. So please, it's time for questions and contributions. So if you have any questions or contributions, you can draw my attention. They will have you. Hey, you want to Fantastic. So you, you talk about Standardizing, yeah. right? So in the in our day and age where things are evolving, what happens to standards? Each things change. Things also change. Yeah. So yes, yes. If things are changing, we, we we said it's 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 not it's not a journey. It, it's not a destination. It's a journey. So as things are evolving, we also need to change. You know. So uh, we need to be receptive to change. And um, you know, bear in mind with the principles, one of them is change. Now it's, it has its own um, session, you know, stressing on the power of change. I like the same but I don't know why. I just like, so I, I tried to even recite it with an acronym. There were 12 um, um, principles with an acronym. I say S T C, you know, um, VALA, V A L, and R. That is risk and O. Let's go to take a VALA. Let's remember. <laughs> I told you I tried to teach people how to memorize it. All right, then, next question. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Eric, everybody. 
Uh, looking at the topic in the brochure, I got interested in the word efficiency, but I didn't hear much of it in the presentation. The question I want to ask is, where do you place the issue of efficiency? Because in the literature, I'm also a student of efficiency, I'm very efficiency now. In the literature, it's been, there are several debates of what is considered as efficient. Within the context of uh, the role that you have shown us, how do we position efficiency and still ensure that we achieve organizational efficiency? Thank you. Efficiency and effectiveness, they are technical words, they are not the same. Efficiency talks about time, managing resources. So if I say it's efficient, I'm looking at, you know, was it done within time, within the budget? And effectiveness is more about the end results. So we say leaders, leaders are more effective driven, managers are efficiency driven. You know, so here we are looking at both. You need to try to use these ones to make you become more efficient. Because they are, I didn't have time because I, I was I was time I was pressed for time, so I couldn't have the time to build that part for us. You know, they are looking at ways to basically improve, to become efficient. Okay, staying within their budget, you know, meeting the timelines and all that, and eventually becoming effective. You know, and <coughs> you don't know how to do it. But the, if you watch them, I I, I I work with a lot of organizations. You watch them. The approach is the PM mindset, but just that they do not know how to do it right. Everybody wants to run, you know, and to do all that. Uh, an organization that wanted to grow from uh, 160 to 180,000 every month, they needed that body because that was the target, you know. Uh, so they invited me, I stepped in. I saw what the things that they did. They invited all the people, they had meetings, they said every month do the work plans. Prepare the work plans have discussions, report every time. But it collapsed. Why? Because they did not understand the process. Not just the plants. You need to also have systems to basically monitor. People should be reporting. Have a champion to check all the time. Now who was the champion? The general manager. What's the problem here? General manager does not have time. So they needed a champion. So they brought me in. And within three months, I helped them move from one to two. One eighty by helping them standardize the practice. That's efficiency there. So helping them with the with the idea of project management, they can become more efficient. They know how to do a copy now. Are you good, sir? Okay. If there are no questions, we would like to draw curtains to this session. Yeah. Thank you very much for your time.